Hey everybody, this is David Fine from Watch Your Lip. Uh, this is our Catch, Cook, and Clean series, and today we are going to be eating a fish that is not typically known in North America as a really popular game fish. It's called the mojara. <laughs> Some people call them sand perch. A lot of people use them for snook bait. That historically is snook bait because snook and tarpon love them. I've caught big jacks on them. They make phenomenal bait. But word on the street is that they're actually good to eat. So we are gonna cook one up today. You guys check out as Lorenzo catches this mojarra in the entry coastal waterway and then we're gonna cook it and eat it. Check it out. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel and check out our other uh, catch, clean and cook videos. We've got a whole series coming your way and we're gonna eat the fish that we catch and check them out. We're gonna show you how to cook them as well. So guys, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, and let's eat some mojarra, shall we? And I'm saying that because I'm a white boy and uh, American guy and my wife says, there's two R's, it's a Spanish word, it's mojarra, mojarra. Yes, mojarra. I think I got it right. Mojarra. I'm used to saying mojarra, white boy tongue. So let's get to some mojarra. Margate? No, that's some horror. What is that? Are they good to eat? They are good to eat. Are they, is that big enough? They're great bait. All right, guys, the mohara, some people call them a sand perch. We know that they are great bait. We know that snook and tarpon both love them. Um, and I've actually heard that they are great to eat, but I've actually never eaten one. I've had several people tell me how good they are, but you can see why they're such good bait, guys. Look how shiny these scales are. And guys, they eat crustaceans. And one of the things about Mahara, which I wanna show you, is they have one of the most bizarre mouths that you have ever seen. Check this out. When they feed, their mouth extends out like this, like an, dude, it's some kind of alien thing. Lorenzo, what do you think about that, bud? That's funny. Isn't that, crazy. isn't that crazy? Look at that. Literally, their mouth extends out and opens like this, like some kind of an alien. And this ridge up on the top slides back into their skull. You can see the skull opening and closing as the mouth slides out. So crazy fish, guys. But um, I've heard that they're really super good to eat. Maybe the snook and tarpon are onto something. They eat crustaceans. They mainly eat shrimp and little crabs and things like that in sand. But we are gonna fillet this bad boy and see how he tastes. Okay, so guys, what we're gonna do, we are actually going to fillet up our mahara. We're gonna make a cut. And guys, we're gonna see just how the mahara fillets look, how the meat looks. And we're gonna just, we have to be really careful with this because it's not a very big, Filet. There's not a lot of meat. This is a small fish. It's a, exactly like snapper. Size. This is like a, a snapper that's barely legal, right? So um, they don't get too much bigger than this. No, Papa. Do they have a do they have a slot that you have no, to do? No, they don't have a size limit. These guys don't have a size limit. They just don't get that big. They don't get as big as like a mango snapper. So mango snapper can get like 20 inches. They, they do. So we cut along the red, uh, the edge, guys. But before we remove the fillet, we'll flip them over and do the same thing with this side. And so you know, like when we do these, we like to just give you a little bit of a fillet tut tutorial, just in case you're learning. I know some people are very familiar with how to fillet fish. But there's a lot of newbies, people that are just starting out, and sometimes you just need a little help. But we always outline our filet. We go right behind the gill plate, behind the dorsal fin, and then we try to outline the rest of the fish. And this is the tricky part. A lot of the meat is right up in here, so you don't want to mess this up. So you got to be real careful to cut 
your, your line right along the spine. Let me see here, let me make a little puncture. Oops, mm -hmm. cut yourself. That was close. We could replay that in slow-mo right there. Yeah. sure we will all right so we're gonna cut right along the rib cage and we're not cutting too deep comment down below if you like um, us doing this catch clean and cook catch scene. clean and cook yeah so we'll see how that all works and so now I've cut I've made lines I've actually outlined the fillets on both sides of this fish some people will scale them you can see uh, I'm getting the scales on my hands the shiny silver scales all right, but guys, here's the deal. I don't scale my fish because I take the skin off when I cook them. So now, the trick is we, we got to be really careful to cut right along here. Right, get, get it, zoom in right here, Lorenzo. To cut right along the rib cage. So if you don't cut right along the rib cage, you lose your meat and you waste your filet. And this is real easy. This is a small fish, guys. It's really easy to mess this fillet up. So I'm just cutting really carefully around, along the rib cage. See, here's the rib cage. You can, all these little lines right here are There's all- black lines. These are all spine, not black, they're white. The spines, oh. the spines right here are the spines from the rib cage and the actual- You can see the, the actual bones. bones from the ribs are right here, guys. That's the rib cage and these are the spines that come off the top. So you gotta cut as close to these as you can. Now we can finish cutting through, but before we take the fillet off, we leave it on because it makes filleting the other side a lot easier. So let's do this again. We cut along the rib cage. And the goal is that when we're done, this piece that we're left with has no meat on it. It's just got ribs, a little, the fin on the top and the skin. Um, on the top and that's it. So we're literally just cutting right along this rib cage right here guys And now that that's done we can kind of cut through our fillet All right, you always gotta be careful not to cut your hands Let's see Okay Ew, look at that yellow stuff. Yeah, yellow stuff. Ooh, I just almost ruined the fillet there guys Ew, look at that. What is that? Well, we're gonna well, maybe we'll do a little dissection here. Let's see what he had Okay, so this guy's, this is actually row. These are actually the eggs. Those are fish. eggs? Yes, those are eggs. That's all row. So this was a female and that's all row. And where's you know, the stomach? Let's, the stomach? Let's see what we uh, have. I don't see, there's not much in the stomach. It's, it's empty. Okay guys, so now we've got our Mahara carcass here and you see all the guts there that are inside the eggs, the row, but look how thin this is, we got literally all of the meat off of this thing right here, and all that is left is the backbone and the ribs that come off each side. That's pretty cool. In fact, let's see if we can get, uh, check this out, come over to the side, come over to the side, video of this right here. Oh, it's so cool. Now you can see that those ribs, right? Yeah. You can see, guys, a little bit of fish anatomy. You got the backbone coming down here, you got the spines that come off of each side, and that's when, when you eat this fish whole, that's what you have to deal with. But when you fillet them and you, you clean them off, you don't have to mess with any of those things. So, uh, what, but the, the spines that are in the fillets that we're gonna have to take out in a minute, they actually come off of the rib cage and poke out on either side, and we have to cut those out. So right here, guys, is where all the guts are. So that's where the ribs actually cover these guts and so that's what's in our fillet and we're going to remove those in a second but now we're going to actually take our fillet and we are going to put it in this bag guys la bomba's mexican spanish restaurant best mexican food going around to yeah there are there's just six locations guys they're all over south florida best mexican food around um check out the website it's labomba123.com and you can check out where the locations are Fantastic. Let's, let's skin our mojara, okay? And then we'll take the rib cage out. So we're just gonna skin this real quick. Get a knife, we put it into the tail, into the wood. Get another knife. And we just kind of cut right along the skin. 
and cut the skin right off. And look at that junk. Yeah, that junk right there. Now we're gonna do the same thing with this. We take a, a knife, we poke, poke it into the wood, and we just hold it in place. And then use another knife and cut along the, the edge of the skin. And just cut the skin right off. That skin is actually I bet stretchy. I could make that into a skirt right there. Yeah, maybe. Let's make sure we got all the skin. Yep, got all the skin. Got all the skin. All right, now, super easy. We can see the rib cage, guys. This is the rib cage that covered all the organs. And this, we lose a little bit of meat, but we're gonna go ahead and cut around that and get, get rid of that, because that is just <laughs> annoying when you're trying to eat. And then there's some ribs, there's little spines, a little row of spines that come down the middle of the filet that come off the rib cage. We are going to remove, actually, there's a few more there. That's, that's a lot of them for that little fish, nope. right? So we're gonna remove those spines. And voila. Voila. Now we've got a nice little filet. It's not a very big filet. Let's remove these here. So let's rinse this filet off real quick. And it's you can see guys, it's pretty nice white meat. It's got a little bit of gray in it. That could be because it's they're living in deep into the uh, intracoastal waterways in the backcountry. We caught this guy in the backcountry a little bit further and the water's a little darker. So that's a possibility, but uh, we're gonna cook them up anyway. Let's see how that goes. All right, and then we're gonna clean, no, clean this guy off as well. Bam. Okay, guys, you can see the Mahara fillets. They're white, a little bit of pink. Some, uh, some venation here that's visible. and uh, But we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cook them up and eat them. So guys, let's cook the mahara and we'll let you know how it tastes. All right guys, in this video, we like to keep it simple because we wanna actually taste the fish. So our ingredients are really, really easy, really simple. We're just gonna have some butter. We've got salt, we've got pepper, and we've got some garlic. Uh, granulated garlic and so that's as simple as it's gonna be uh, guys and we are just going to see how these fish taste with these simple ingredients so check this out as we apply these ingredients to our fish all right so folks as we prepare our mohara today actually my mother-in-law corrected me it's supposed to be mohara mohara <laughs> so it's mohara mohara Okay, so the mojarra, uh, I have the lovely Mrs. Fine. She's going to be our chef tonight. How you doing, babe? Doing well, and you? Good. Did I pronounce it right just the last thing? Mojarra? Mojarra. Yeah, you know, it'll depend where you're from. So, if you're not Spanish and mojarra is what comes out, mojarra is... Mojarra came out. All right. So, guys, mojarra is a fish that we can catch in the intracoastal, in the shallow, in the beaches, in the shallow, shallow reefs, guys. And you can see the nice white fillets. Uh, they eat shellfish. And the, a little bit of gray in the meat over here, a little bit of gray venation. Uh, some of the other fish that we've caught are completely white, but I know that there's a lot of people that truly love this fish and they say that it tastes really nice. So we're gonna try it out. We're gonna see how it tastes and we're gonna keep the recipe simple. And Mrs. Fine is gonna show us so we're ready, but before I start, I want to take a sip of my LaCroix Curate Pineapple Strawberry Drink that okay. I'm right now I'm in love with. She's in love with I love sparkling water, so this is one and other flavors of this brand that I really enjoy. Oh, wow. So what you're saying is if somebody wanted to bless you. Mm. I, I, I love that. She loves it. Yeah, I love, um, I also love uh, kombucha. <laughs> it's a good one too. But anyways, let's wash my hands first. Yes. Do that. Do that. Start. Yep. So um, we have, it's very hard with this simple spices because I'm not used to just using just a few, but David wanted to make it as simple as we could so he could taste the fish. Okay, so here we go guys. So we have the butter and we're going to brush it off with the butter. <laughs> delicious fish here Mahara. and I use the non-dairy butter so uh, you can use any butter that will fit your dietary needs you know there's no need when you hear butter do not get discouraged if you do not have dairy mm. 
Okay, here we go. And then garlic. A bit of garlic. Is no, is that garlic, garlic salt or is that just No, regular garlic? garlic cause I'm mm -hmm. gonna use my salt separately cause I like to measure how much salt I put on it. With the garlic salt, sometimes you can, if you're not measuring it correctly, yep. it can get really um, salty. Got it. A little bit of salt. And then my pepper. A little bit of pepper. Same. The other side, garlic, garlic, salt, salt, and papa. Mm. Okay. Mojarra. Mojarra for you. Mojarra frita? No. No. <laughs> Mojarra no frita. frita. No, okay. Talk this to is me. the broiler. Broiler. All right, yes. now what? what are we, what's the next step? Putting it in the broiler. Ooh. Uh, is yeah. it ready? It's not. <laughs> Our mojara, mojara, babe. Yes. Let's cook it. Mojara going in the oven. The broiler. Thank you very much. That's gonna taste lovely for sure. <laughs> we are gonna take a mojara, 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 out of the oven. And so, babe. You ready to take the mojarra out of the oven? Yeah, look at the mojarra. Mojarra. Wow, that's like nothing. <laughs> You're so negative. Okay, mojarra. All right, babe, go ahead and put it there. And what we're gonna do, guys, we are going to do a taste test on the mojarra. Ready? Pearl. Mr. Lorenzo, are you ready to be the first taste test Whoa. person for a mojara filet. Yes. Okay, now listen, before you taste it. Mm, it so Does it smell good? Yeah, wait, I need water real quick. A little bit of water, okay? okay. All right, so Lorenzo, why don't you go ahead and taste the mojara? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Mm, it's really good. Is it really good? It's super good. Are you sure? What does it taste like? It tastes like a little better than Snapper. Better than Snapper? No, never. Really? Uh, uh. Never. Mm. Better than Snapper. Wow. I, mean, I haven't tried Snapper in a long, long time. Though. Okay, okay. Well, that's a, that's a huge claim for it to be better than Snapper. Yeah. It's right. a little better than Snapper. So, so it's like around the same, it's around the in same. In the same thing. genre as Snapper. So would you eat Mojara again? Would like if we if we caught a bunch of Mojara. I would so Mojara. I would eat it so much. You would? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, Sophia, Hi. your turn, girl. Lorenzo? Sophie, Sophie likes raw fish, so this I is actually do. cooked. And you're going to take a little <laughs> a little chunk of the mojarra. Mojarra. Oh, that's, mojarra. That's, that's nothing. Okay. okay. There. Sophia is going to taste. It smells like chicken. It smells, well, that's good. If it tastes like chicken, that's good, right? <laughs> what? Huh, what are you doing? Mouth closed. Yeah, Come she's on. spitting out chunks of mojarra all over my counter. We'll get it in your hair. It's super good, right? What do you think? Think. It's so plain. <laughs> okay, but what's the taste of the fish? Plain. Plain. That is so good. So, but it's not. It doesn't have a real strong fishy taste, though, right? You know. No. All right. It's just. Well, hold I on. Can... So, there's got to be enough on that fillet for us all. Oh. That shows you how <laughs> how small these fillets are, because uh, four bites can actually take them all up. And Lorenzo's like, we've got all that fish over there for you. To eat. All right, honey. Now, Noemi is going to taste mojarra for the first time. It's plain. I like it, and yeah. because I really don't like the taste of fish, like those fish that are really strong, that yes. you can barely taste anything else but that fishy smell, yeah. you can't eat. So this one doesn't yeah. have any of that. No fishy smell. And it's very, uh, as you saw, the seasonings that we used. Very simple. Very simple, so that means that the fish itself it's a good meat to have for those that don't like fish very much. This is, like Sophia said, a similar to chicken. Really? So, guys, I have actually never eaten mojarra 
So I'm gonna taste this for the very first time. Let's see. Is it plain? It is. It's actually really good. I think I would eat it again. I would. Guys, I would totally eat this again. This is actually really, really good. So all the people that have ever told me that mojarra is good to eat, uh, okay, I give, I you give don't need up. you don't need to talk in a Spanish Mahara. accent. Every time you Mahara. say it. whatever it's called, it tastes good. So guys, the mahara tastes really good. It tastes almost identical to snapper. I would super. I would so eat it again without hesitation. <laughs> I don't know. I think the pe pepper messed up your taste buds. Yeah. No, I mean like it's good, and I would eat it again, but. Not you want your sashimi. I know Sophie wants her sashimi. But guys, what do you think? Mahara, thumbs up, thumbs down in the what? middle. Babe, thumbs up or thumbs down? I like it. You like it. All right. No, if she likes fish, that's a good thing. She's not typically the biggest fish eater. All right. No, Sophia, down. what should they do? They should subscribe down below and click the bell notification. Yes. To be notify when we subscribe. post. Subscribe. And we also have merchandise and it's awesome. We got the merch. That's a nice hat. It's really snuggly. Yeah, and it's really... Oh, that's a good shirt, It's too. really comfortable. All right. So, Lorenzo, if you catch another mahara, are you going to use them for bait, for snook fishing? Depends. If it's like, if it's like a 10-inch <laughs> mahara, he's going in the pot. In the pot. If it's like a 2-inch, 4-inch mahara, I don't think he's... Bait, baby, bait. Bait. All right. Guys, till next time. Watch your lips. And maharas better watch that funky little lip of theirs. That's so weird. Muharra, Muharra.